Hi everybody. Today I'm going to show you my design, Hidden Heart, which I was inspired and dedicated to Trish at Artisan Loom. This is the version I sent her. It is actually version number two right here. And I just used um, the little, um, what do you call those, jump rings and interlocked um, the like inner parts of each of these single chain rows right here. I just connected them up. Um, you can look at Trisha's page on Facebook to learn how to do that. So this is version one because the like the yellow bands underneath kind of make a heart shape. That's why I called it hidden heart. On this one, since there's not as much tension up the middle, it's kind of like smileys, smile faces. <laughs> and then this one, it's got more of the hidden heart shape, but it's kind of more hidden because of this here. I'm probably going to show you how to do this one because this is a little bit more difficult up the center to follow, but the looming back procedure is exactly the same. So the difference between the three is only how you place the bands on these two middle and it's four across like this. Let me show you some renditions I did and I did them in this. I just grabbed crazy colors and I really, really love how it turned out. I don't know, some designs, it seems like I can't put any colors together that look right. It's very difficult. And this one, it seems like I use any crazy color. It actually looks better in person than what I'm seeing on my screen. But, you know. And then there's this one where I just placed a bead. And then this little segment I made right here. I really like the colors. So for this one, instead of using um, two different colors here, these I, both this one and this one were all 600 count. And this, these were done all in 300 count. So it totally works either way. There's just one little difference, which I'll show you on the hidden heart bands. Um, if you use 600 counts, you'll use two per section, but no worries. I'll show you as you go. Okay, and so for the border, I'm going to use these. Um, what goes second? What's here is the, um, those new silicone, the garnet color. I'm using the 600 count, the avocado, so those would either be two per section or one 300 count because it's thicker. And then, oh wait, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's behind. And oh, I'm sorry. These right here are going to be the blue behind, okay? And the top color, which is the garnet, I'm just going to use the white. So like LE bands. Okay. So without further confusion, let's get going. And I'm not going to really do a whole bracelet because it does take a little while for some reason, even though like my Mayflower design, which I've done the tutorial for and I still need to post. Um, that's like, I think five or six bars wide. And it seems to go so much faster than this little four bar wide design. Oh, come on. All right. So for your connecting band for later on, um, if I, when I use 600 count, I always put two here just to make a, a nice heavier duty connection. And then we're going to go just do like a single chain border. I'm only going to do this 
Now pretend if this is your end, you know, and this is going to be like the end of the loom, just place one here like this for now, okay? We'll fix that later. And do the up the other side. So I'm pretending, you know, this is like a full, full length bracelet, but it is going to be for like nobody's wrist because it's way too small. <laughs> Oops. And again, just place one there. Now you're going to go back either with the exact same color or as I did on this one, I used the um, Jelly Glow in the Dark Yellow for the bottom. So whatever's here is the bottom layer. And the top layer, layer I just used the pastel uh, yellow. On this one, I use those, I forget which ones they are, but they kind of like, they look like this, they got about 10 different colors. So the bottom layer was the dark orange, and this top layer, which I'm doing now, is the lighter orange. So, do the exact same thing. Up each side. And for now, just stop here. Okay, you see this top band will lock that one in and we'll place that a little later. Then do the same on your other side. And the reason I do that is I don't want to finish the top of the border until I have the middle bands placed. Okay. Now, please do not be confused by this because placing the, these, the bands next will be different, but when we loom them back, it's the exact same procedure. So, if you like this finished look, they kind of crisscross. Okay, I put the bead on the band that goes like this, okay? That's how I got that effect. So for this, you're just going to make X's all the way up the center, okay? Like that. So you will do those all the way up to here, okay? So let's pretend that was that. So that's how version one will look like. Version two, which is this one and the same as the one I made for Trish, you're going to put two single chains up like this. Okay. Just follow them up to the end of your design. Version three, and I made these three versions oh, all the way band because I couldn't decide which one I like better. And you've definitely seen me do this before, but I will actually do the tutorial on this one because it's a little more difficult setting up. So on this one, you're going to take bands, put them all the way across like this. And I'm just using any old colors. Okay, but you will not do it on the final one because that's, you know, that's going to be your cap right here. So you do that. Now you place two single chains up each center with this one going to the end of your design. Okay, so if you're doing either the other first two versions, um, you're just going to hang out and wait, okay? 
nothing else to do right now. We just have to do a little poli preliminary, preliminary setup. So we're going to turn it around and we're going to do, do this. And it really, on this one, it doesn't matter if you go right to left or left to right, but you can reach under and make this little cuff stitch. So once I get this done, we'll be caught up with any of you doing the version one or two, okay? Okay. Make sure you turn the loom back around, arrows pointing away from you. Okay, so whether you, you know, placed your bands crisscross or just straight up or this way, we're all even. Okay, now we can place this, like this, that's the bottom layer, and then take, because remember we have two levels of border bands. Place that one and that one. Okay, so if you can see it looks like that. Now, alrighty, and sorry that um, the sequence from that first segment to this one is very choppy, but I did a boo-boo. I was actually explaining how uh, trouble I how much trouble I was having making sure I did all the steps and I had forgotten one so as I was saying whether you placed your bands in the center as X's two rows or you did it this third way the next thing you do um, and I just use the same the same bands if you want to use something different you can but you're going to do this. And I need a few more. Excuse me a second. I'm going to grab a few more white bands. This is my recycled bin. Oh, you can't see it, but yeah, I bought this to keep like all my like 300 counts for you know practice reuse they're kind of all stretched out but they work to get an essence of a design and they do hold their stretch a lot better than the three the 600 count the 600 count pretty much once you use them you really can't use them again okay now where was my Okay, this next step, which I already showed you, but I'm not showing you because I have to delete that because I forgot to put these bands on. I know, I have you confused. So, next step. If you're using 300 count, you're just going to be doing this all the way up, okay? But if you're using 600 count, I like to use two. I just found that it makes the design more robust. So I place two like that and I pull it over these two. Now, you can place you know, two here and stretch to there, but I found if you place it up here and stretch it back, the end result is the same and it's just a little easier. So we're gonna do this all the way up the loom to the end of our design. <laughs> oh, I hope I didn't mess it up too much. I hope I'll find a place to cut out my mistake and splice in this section. You know what? 
this is just a demonstration piece. It's not going to be a bracelet, so ignore my sloppiness. I'm just here to show you the steps. Okay. And hopefully there won't be any trouble in transitioning from what I showed you there. But before I do that last one, if you rem I may have already said this, but that um, lower, remember we had this, let me show you again, they look like this, okay, before you put these center squares, you're going to take that bottom layer and finish off the top end of the border, and then place Okay, I'm just repeating this in case it got messed up in um, my editing. Okay, so you got that done. So now you can place your last or last two um, squares. Okay, now we can cap that off. I'm making a cap across these two pins. Now we can turn it around. Oh no, my battery's dying. I think I'm going to go switch my battery right now before I get cut off. Alrighty. Got a nice fresh battery. All the other one's charging. Step one. We're going to reach here. Grab this horizontal band. Bring it up. You can just do one side and then the other since they don't interact with each other. Very, very easy. And if you wonder how we designers come up with this stuff, <laughs> at least for me, it's just a lot of trial and error. You just don't see all the boo-boos or the, the duds. I can work hours and hours to get something the way I like it. And once on a rare, rare occasion, I can just throw some bands on and voila! I have a nice little design. This one was somewhere in the middle. I actually don't even remember designing it now. I mean... I remember making the bracelet for Trish, but the whole designing part is kind of a blur. Okay, so we've got that. Next thing is a little complicated, but not too bad. Remember, we have the d dual layer border bands here. So we're going to reach down and grab the underneath one. We're going to grab that bottom one, okay? So for this one, see that there? You grab that, and this is the only one, well, this and the other, the top, top border. You to bring this to its home pin, and I'll do one side and the other. But after that, we're going to grab this one right here. So reach all the way down, that bottom band. There, see it? Bring it up, and we're going to bring it to this pin up and over. Okay. Ooh -hoo. It's funny if this turns out to be really awesome looking color scheme and I just made a little sample. Okay, so this will be the last one you do like this. And then this one, you're going to reach under and just bring it, this one, to its home pin. Then we're going to do it on this side. So reach down there, grab that bottom, and bring it over to this way. All right. 
Oh, sorry, you didn't see that, but I just, you know, finished bringing them up to the next pin up, and this one great to hear. Sorry about that, but it was the same as this side, and hopefully that was on screen. So I just reached under the bottom and brought it over here. Now. Make sure I don't forget to loom up the borders, okay? If um, I forget and try to finish it off, you're going to just single chain these up because I have forgotten that so many times. Okay, we're going to do the middle bands. So regardless of how you placed the bands up the center, all of them will come back like this. Oh, wait, wait, before, uh -uh, one little step. Take this border band get it out of the way. Okay, and we'll come back and do the border later. I probably should do it first, but anyhow, regardless of how these bands here were originally placed, you will do the same thing. Take it from there, there. Left, then right to left left to right, right to left. And I probably should have said that you should probably use stretchier bands for that. Um, but if you use stiffer bands, I found the best way for them not to snap is just slowly work them out. And I even just use my finger to gently guide them over. <laughs> Good, nothing worse than a snapped band and a design that you can't you know, pull it apart and fix it. Some designs you can. This is one you can't. But hopefully all of you have enough experience when you get to doing these type of designs that you can tell just by how they're placed that, oh, probably should consider stretcher bands. Or if you're like me, when I watch it, I watch a design first before I make it. Okay, so now we got that done. Now we are going to come and finish these. It's a little bit weird, but I just I just kind of do like this so I can see which band I'm looking for. And this is the I usually find this the only hard one. Oops, grab the wrong one. See, told you. Okay. After that, it's pretty. The rest of it, it's like the only one there. See? It's just this. these corners have a little bit more going on. So as you can see, I'm just bringing, which is, it's actually the, the top layer of the border bands. We're just bringing them straight up in kind of a single chain, just a little. I think it'd be a little easier, but it's just being a little difficult, isn't it? Okay, almost done. And then we don't want to forget doing this one right here. Let's see. Because I forgot that on. Which one did I forget? On one of these, I forgot it, and they just hang out if you don't. So reach in there, it's right there, and bring it. That one you bring to its home pit. Well, I guess we do that to all of them on this layer, right? See, the confusing thing about this first one is it's not really the lowest band. Because this one's the lowest, but it's, I don't know. You'll find it. Just wiggle it around, you'll see it. <sighs> yeah, sometime in the next couple of months, I should be moving out of this room, which I'm always complaining about when it gets warm out. Because it's very stuffy, no air current, and if I turn on the fan, my viewers get annoyed at that buzzing sound of the fan. Mike picks up. 
But where I'm going to be, you're probably going to hear all the kids outside playing and making noise. Oh, actually, I do this late at night, so usually they're asleep, but not always. Yeah, so people let their kids stay out really late. Okay, I'm looking for a clip. Can I find one? You know what? I'm just going to take one off of this since I'll be taking this apart. Okay. So now we're going to reach and grab that. And if you've got 600 count, you might have two of those to grab, which I recommend. I just think it makes it for a much nicer, um, sturdier. Now, gently pry it off the loom. So as always, when I do this cup design, I always like to let's see, grab something handy dandy and just pull them out like this so that they set up nicely. I mean, even this weird color combo isn't all that bad, is it? I don't know, this design just seems to be very forgiving to crazy color schemes. And so, yeah, I'm not going to take my time and bore you while I snap all those into place, but that is the design. That's what it looks like on that side, which is okay, I guess. You just can't see the green. The hidden, the hidden hearts are really hidden on this side. So anyhow, yeah, this is version three of the hidden heart. And this was version one where you crisscross the scent, the bands in the two center rows. Um, version two, they just went straight up. And version three, which I fully demonstrated. Thank you so much for watching. And if you'd like to be kept apprised of my tutorials, which are very irregularly posted, um, be sure to subscribe to Deb's Thing here on YouTube and check me out on Instagram at Deb's Thing and I won't complain if you give me a follow. Thanks for watching. Good night.